This year, the world witnessed space history not once, not twice, but three times as the private spaceflight companies Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin, and SpaceX successfully launched their space tourism businesses. Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic became the first to reach the space boundary in early July, while Jeff Bezos' company Blue Origin flew a few days later and a bit higher on the anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. Among the passengers was pilot Wally Funk, who at the time became the oldest person in space at age 82. But just a few months later, 90-year-old actor William Shatner claimed that title when he also rode aboard Blue Origin. Shatner made famous the role of Captain James T. Kirk on the iconic 1960s TV show Star Trek. If you take a step back and look at 2021, it's been a really um, amazing year. I think that at this point, we're kind of experiencing um, a renaissance in in human spaceflight. NASA's Misty Snopkowski tells VOA SpaceX's fundraiser flight for St. Jude Children's Hospital may have been the most significant of the year. Because Inspiration4 was successful, I think that's going to stimulate more um, activities in the Earth orbit and really enable more people to, to go into space. The entire mission was bankrolled by a billionaire on board the flight. Now, the private investment into space is, is bigger than the NASA budget. So the private industry is putting more money than the government is into space. So this is definitely, in my opinion, the inflection point for the, the industry. Autry says reusable hardware makes going into space cost efficient and more eco-friendly than single-use rockets. But he adds that it probably won't be us making those first trips. I think before you see people, though, you'll probably see cargo. So you'll see sushi coming from Tokyo to London, uh, uh, you know, in an hour. Um, and that's crazy, but I, I know there are crazy people who will pay for that. <laughs> in other news this year, NASA landed on Mars. The Perseverance rover, or Percy for short, and its travel buddy, the Ingenuity helicopter, began a quest for signs of ancient life. The flight took about seven months before a dramatic landing on the Martian surface. That's all fine, says Autry, but he says the focus should be closer to home. We could run onto Mars, we could spend a lot of public money, and we could stake that flag there and bring back a soil sample and maybe discover life, but it wouldn't have actually done anything for people on Earth, right? What would do something for people on Earth, he says, is eventually moving mining and manufacturing industries off the planet and onto the moon. But before that happens, NASA plans to launch its Artemis I mission next February. It is the first of three missions with the end goal of landing the first woman and next man on the moon by 2025. NASA Snopkowski tells VOA future moon missions will include a public-private partnership that will drive down costs for the space agency. One of NASA's goals is to be just one of many customers, right, in this commercial space strategy that we've we've laid out. Um, and so, in that um, in that goal, NASA would be um, only purchasing what they need as far as goods and services go. Before we turn the page on this year, a look at Space Oddities 2021. There was the first known French crepe made in space, tests on the immune systems of baby bobtail squid, and the first ever space games. For 2022, look for more launches from the private spaceflight giants, NASA's test trip to the moon, further research from Mars, and the U.S. Mint's release of the Sally Ride Porter, honoring the first American woman in space. Arash Arabasadi, VOA News. Second separation burn. The next uh, separation.